Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome back to DevDreamer. In this lesson we're taking a look at CSS numerical units. So, so far in these lessons, you've seen me use things like PX, which is short for pixels, or perhaps the percentage sign. These are known as numerical units. And in this lesson, we're going to be going over pretty much everything you need to know about them. So, there are two types of numerical units in CSS. And you can see them here on the screen. We have absolute units and relative units. Let's take a look at what some of them are. So, with absolute units, we have things like pixels, centimeters, points, etc. And with relative units, we have things such as EM, REM, the percentage, viewport width, viewport height. But what do they all mean? And why so many, right? Why not just give us one? Why not just give us pixels so we can just use that? Well, the main difference between the two is that absolute units are fixed, whereas relative units are fluid. What we mean by that is Let's say, for example, you have a box and you set the width of that box to be 200 pixels. Now, no matter what the size of your screen or what the size of the parent element, the width of the box will remain the same. That's because its value is using an absolute value. That is, it is fixed. Whereas a relative value is relative to a parent element or a root element. Okay, well, yeah, that's all great, Amit. But what does all that mean? When should we use one or the other? Well, let's dive into the text editor and look at these in a bit more detail. Okay, so here we are then in our text editor. On the screen, I have two titles, absolute or fixed units, and then some examples underneath. And then we also have relative or fluid units with again, some examples underneath, okay? But we also have these two colored bars here. Well, this one here is basically a div with an ID of absolute. And this one here is a div with an ID of relative. And we're gonna be using these divs here to talk about absolute and relative units in a bit more detail. So let's take a look at our style CSS file. We have a, a div here, which again relates to these two here. So these both have a height of 10 pixels, as you can see right here. Our div with an ID of absolute has a width of 50 pixels. So notice it's using an absolute or fixed unit of pixels. Okay, so this has a width of 50 pixels. Our div with an ID of relative is using a relative or fluid unit of VW. So this has a width of 50 VW. Now VW, as you can see here, is basically short for viewport width, or you just say view width. And the viewport is essentially the screen size. So this here is going across by 50 VW. Now full width would be 100 VW, so 50 is basically right into the middle. Okay, so know that this div here is using a fixed width, and this is using a fluid or relative width. What do you think will happen if we actually increase the screen size? Well, let's take a look. Keep your eye on both of these here. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, our div with an ID of absolute, which has a width of 50 pixels, is staying exactly the same. And that's exactly what we expected. Remember guys, absolute units are fixed. So no matter what you do to the screen, they will always remain exactly the same. However, our relative div is actually doing something different. It's actually changing and moving, or seeming to change and move, as we increase the size of the screen. That's because this is using a relative unit. And so as the screen size increases, the size of our div always stays relative to it. Okay. Now, when it comes to absolute units, the one you're going to use the vast majority of the time is going to be pixels. Okay. It's very rare that you're going to be using centimeters, millimeters. You're going to be using pixels for the vast majority of the time. When it comes to relative units, the most popular is going to be EM and even percentage. These others can be used, as you can see here, we've used uh, VW, but across different browsers. But generally speaking, with EM and percentage, you're safe. Okay, so let's take a look at a different relative unit. Let's now change this to 50%. Okay, and this looks pretty much the same as 50 VW, 50 uh, view width. And that's because it would be. If you take a look at the little explanation here, it says this is relative to the parent element. Well, our div with an ID of relative isn't directly inside another element, and so its parent here would be the root element. And of course, the root element would be 100% going across, which is why here again, if we were to increase this, this works in the exact same way. It's always half. What happens though, if we were to add our own parent element around this div? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our HTML file. Let's just uh, save this first. Okay, and here, let's just do an ID of outer div and let's copy this and paste it inside there okay so at the moment then it looks exactly the same 
But let's actually specify a width for this outer div. So here, let's say outer div. And let's specify a width of 100 pixels. Now, we can see that a change has occurred here. We can see that our relative div has changed, okay? It's, it's gone smaller. Why is that? Well, remember, before, the parent element was the root element, which is 100%. The parent element was the root element, so 50% would have been halfway. Whereas now, we've added our own parent element around this div, called outer div, and we've given it a width of 100 pixels. So now, this 50% is relative to the parent element, which is this outer div, which has a width of 100 pixels. So in other words, our relative div now has a width of 50 pixels, because 50% 50 of 100 pixels is 50 pixels, which is why these are both now exactly the same. And to illustrate this and just make a bit more sense here, let's actually add a border around here. Uh, let's just say two pixels, solid red, and let's give it some padding, uh, just to say three pixels. Okay, so this outer div here has a width of 100 pixels. Inside this outer div, we have our div of ID relative. This has a width of 50%. This 50% is now being calculated according to the width of its parent element, which was 100 pixels. So for example, if we were to change this to 200 pixels, this would now be 100 pixels. If we were to change this to 500 pixels, this now would be 250 pixels. So remember, absolute or fixed units always stay the same whereas relative units are relative to something else. And that's basically the difference between the two. Relative units are useful to be used in things such as web development projects, so that, for example, things look good on smaller devices with smaller screens. So that is the basic difference then between the two. Let's now take a look at how this can affect font size. So here, let's go back to our HTML file. And let's just say dev dreamer. And now let's style this. Now, before I do, we took a look at default browser styles earlier on in this tutorial series, and we saw that by default, the browser styles certain elements. Well, by default, our paragraph element has a font size of 16 pixels. In fact, our relative unit of EM is equivalent to 16 pixels. So one EM is equivalent to 16 pixels. So here, if we were to say font size, Let's just give ourselves some space here. Okay, and we said font size, one EM. Okay, as you can see, it's made no difference at all. If we were to increase this to two EM, this would be equivalent of 16 times two, which is 32 pixels. Okay, so this now has a font size of 32 pixels. We can even give this a font size of, let's say, five view width. And if we were to increase the size of the screen now, we can see that our paragraph element grows and shrinks to accommodate for the screen size. Okay guys, so that is all about absolute or fixed units and relative or fluid units. If you found this video useful and it helped you out in some way, please take the time to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really does help me out. Please also share this video as well with those who you think would find it useful. Okay guys, so that's it for this lesson, but don't worry, because as always, I'll see you on the next one.